Hi, my name is Michelle. This is Actuarial, my actuarial YouTube channel, and today I thought we would learn some things that actuaries need to know. I'm pulling out a bread and butter concept for today, and we are going to talk about loss cost, otherwise known as pure premium, which is something that is fundamental bread and butter to me as a pricing actuary, and something that is fairly easy to understand once you take a couple seconds to think about it. So I thought I would take the time to explain it to you today. If you like learning actuarial topics, please let me know in the comments below. In order to make our way over to loss cost, we first have to learn some more basic terms that feed into what a loss cost is. We're talking bread and butter here. We're talking bread and butter and feeding and food. Am I hungry? No. I ate some baked oats this morning. They were very yummy. I'm not hungry, but we are using these metaphors. One of the most basic things that we have to understand is the concept of an insurance exposure. What is an exposure? It is a unit of risk. When you buy an insurance policy, what you're doing is you're saying, I do not want the risk associated with the bad things that might happen. I don't want to be responsible if a car accident happens, if my house burns down. I want to give you the risk and I am paying you money so that you take my risk. But what is risk and how many risks are you selling? How how do we count how many risks we have? There is no one right answer, but there are some more commonly accepted answers. Thinking about car insurance as an example, is one unit of risk a thousand kilometers driven? Is one unit of risk one car that's insured? How do we measure risk? On the home side, is it one floor of a house? Is it a certain amount of square footage? Is it one house insured? What are we doing to measure one unit of risk? Generally accepted for car insurance often will use one car year as one unit of risk and on home insurance will use one house year as a unit of risk meaning if a person comes to us and insures one car for two years that's two units of risk if they insure two cars for one year that's again two units of risk if they insure one car for half a year that's half a unit but generally one year of insurance for one car is one unit of risk and that is what we would call our exposure base it is that number of units that we are insuring how many cars are we insuring for a period of one year make sense I hope so. If not, you can like let me know in the comments below, but we don't have this immediate feedback situation because I'm pre-recording this and then I'll edit it eventually. The next important thing that we need to understand is a claim or a loss. I will use these terms interchangeably. It's possible that some people will say that they mean different things, but I'm going to use them to mean the same thing. So it's a covered accident your house burning down, your car getting in a crash. It is something that happens that you call your insurance company and they're like, yeah, okay, we're gonna pay you out for this. When we look at something called claim frequency, this is the number of claims that we have divided by the number of exposures that we are insuring. Why do we look at this? This tells us how likely someone is to have a claim. We'll look at these numbers as an actuary, these frequency numbers, both in aggregate to see are people getting in accidents more or less often than they were before. For example, when we were in lockdowns in 2020, we were seeing big decreases in claim frequency. But also what we do is we will look at claim frequency in relative groups. So we'll say, do men have more accidents than women? Do young people have more accidents than older people? Do people in red cars have more accidents than green cars? We don't actually look at it by car color, but people think we do, but we really don't. At least in Canada, no one in Canada is using car color as a measure of um, determining insurance prices. Fun fact. So claim frequency is number of claims over your exposure base. It is the percentage of people that have had a claim. It's a probability measure. It is how likely someone is to have a claim. The next metric that's important to understand is claim severity. We measure this one by looking at the amount of claims incurred. We talked about claims incurred in my reserving video, but generally it's the amount that we're paying out or will have to pay out in the future for claims that are covered by these policies divided by the number of claims that we have. What this is going to tell us is for every claim that we have, how much does it cost us on average? And again, we'll look at this in relative levels. Do men have more expensive accidents than women? Are BMW accidents more expensive than Honda accidents? Claim severity is 
if the claim happens, how much does it cost on average? Obviously, some claims are going to be a million dollars and some claims are going to be $500, but on average, this is what we're looking at. I was shocked when I became an actuary and realized how much my day is just looking at averages. Frequency, how often a claim happens, severity, how expensive it is, when the accident happens. Now we smush those two concepts together. If you multiply frequency and severity, you will end up with loss cost. Like my high school physics teacher taught me, all you have to do is follow the units. So we're looking at number of claims divided by exposures times amount of claims divided by number of claims. So you can just cross those two out and now we end up with that nice formula of amount of claims divided by number of exposures. And that is how we end up with our loss cost. The reason why insurance companies are able to buy your risk is because they are able to spread that risk over a lot of people. People hate buying insurance because most people are not going to use their insurance and yet they keep having to buy it. And then in the situation where they do have to use it, it's probably like the worst day of your life because you just got in a car accident or hail just destroyed your roof. Like you're having a bad day. So any touch point with an insurance company is generally an annoying touch point. But the reason why insurance works is because we are spreading those costs over everyone. What loss cost is telling us is for the claims that we have to cover, for these losses that we have to pay out, what is the cost when we are spreading it across everybody? Let's say we're only insuring three people and they each have a $30,000 house. I know. If one house burns down, then they each pay $10,000 to rebuild the third. If two houses burn down, they each pay $20,000. And if all three houses burn down, then they're each paying $30,000. There's really no benefit because um, we have to cover all the losses, right? So in the situation where only one house burns down, we have $30,000 in losses spread over these three people, so everyone has to pay $10,000. $10,000 in this situation would be like the premium that they're paying, and then it's also the loss cost. It's the cost to every person, because we're not allocating that loss back to an individual, we're allocating the loss back to everyone. As pricing actuaries, we will look in aggregate at the loss cost and we'll say, are there trends in loss cost where it's going up? Often we'll look at trends on a frequency, severity, and loss cost basis. We want to know, are accidents happening more often? Are accidents more expensive when they do happen? Or are there just general trends that are bringing us up or down? Down would be nice doesn't happen as often as up, especially in this high inflation world. But in aggregate, we'll look at our loss costs going up. But again, we're also looking at relative levels. When I spread all the losses from men amongst all the men that we are insuring, what is the average cost? Then I look at it from a different angle. When I look at all the 16 year olds that we're insuring, and I look at all the losses that came from 16 year olds, how much does it cost on average? And then I look at all the people who live in Ottawa and I look at all the losses that are coming from Ottawa and I say, okay, how much does that cost each person on average? And what we're doing is we're looking at these average costs over and over multiple metrics simultaneously to say, how much should we charge people? On a one-way basis, meaning only looking at one metric at a time, so example, only looking at people by age, or only looking at cars by manufacturer type, or only looking at city that you live in, you're able to see what was the actual average cost versus what was the average premium that we charged people. And are those relative levels the same? If the average cost of a claim for men is twice as much as women, but we're only charging men one and a half times as much as women, then we have something that's out of whack. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make premium the same relative amount as our average loss cost, as our pure premium. As a human, I can do this over one, maybe two metrics at once. We then use more sophisticated models like GLMs or gradient boosted trees or other machine learning models to simultaneously look at all these factors and come up with these more sophisticated algorithms where their target variable, what they're trying to predict, is relative loss cost. And that's why loss cost is an important metric to know. The more you know. That was a rainbow, guys. A rainbow. Like I mentioned, leave me comments below if you want to hear more about things that actuaries know. If not, just thumbs it up, subscribe, and I love you, and thank you for calling. Bye.